Hi, back again. I've had some questions get direct message to me via Facebook, uh, Peppered Cow on Facebook, Peppered Cow on YouTube, but you might also be able to still search for the Rustic Tart. I'm not sure. That's what I used to blog under. But anyway, it's Peppered Cow on Facebook, just Peppered Cow. <laughs> Anyway, I've had some questions about staples in the kitchen. What are my must-haves to have around? Um, so what I've got today is a few of my favorite things. It's probably flat, but anyway, I'm going to start with sugar, okay? This is raw washed sugar. It's from Florida Crystals. It's raw cane sugar. I don't always buy that brand, but I always buy raw washed sugar, cane sugar. There's a big difference. Remember we talked, to, I talked to you about salt the other day. There is a big difference between beet sugar and cane sugar when it comes to your pancreas. I'm not a medical professional, but beet sugar seems to be consensus with healthcare professionals, beet sugar uh, it creates more of a, a, a response, a uh, insulin response in your body. Now it's, it's probably not a whole bunch, but the cane sugar, you know, it's from a plant. I know sugar beets are plants too, but sugar beets were designed to be the crack of the sugar world. Oh boy. <laughs> Uh, I'm so sorry about that, but cane sugar is, uh, you know, it's kind of a, it's a tuberous thing. Anyway, so raw wash sugar. Another thing about raw wash sugar, it's, you can see it, it's not white, but I bake with this all the time. When I have a recipe that calls for one cup of granulated sugar, I reach for the raw wash cane sugar. It affects the color a little bit, especially when I'm making like lemonade, homemade lemonade, and I have to make a simple syrup. It's a little tan, but that's okay. The lemons go in there and it's all fine. So the reason why I use raw wash cane sugar, two things, uh, to get sugar white, granulated sugar white, they pass it through charred bones, which is not a happy thing if you're a vegan or sometimes even, you know, I mean, vegan or vegetarian, it's just not a desirable quality. So that's how they get your sugar white. They pass it through charred animal bones. And maybe they're working to change that, but this is the information that I have today. If anyone else out there has different information, please feel free to share. Okay, so that's my sugar. A salt box with some good salt. This is my diamond crystal kosher salt. We talked about the weight the other day, but I also have, you can't see it because it's almost empty, but this is my pink Himalayan salt grinder and it does take the rock salt and I have to refill this. I just checked my cupboard, I didn't have any, but this is pink Himalayan salt. Uh, sea salt in a, also a grinder, okay? So you can take your sea salt and you can use that if you're feeling moved to use sea salt. Sometimes I do, just for the iodine situation. Pepper, good black peppercorns. Or you can get a tri-peppercorn blend at different places. And that will have white and green and pink and black. So I guess it's like a four pepper blend. But just having some good black pepper. I also have that other blend. Then you want to have kind of a favorite seasoning salt. I'm not gonna mention any names, but I think we recognize this. I don't use this a whole bunch. I'm gonna use it tonight a little bit in the casserole, I think, because I do like it on a little bit on meats, but not much. I, a lot of times I use it for my potatoes because it's kind of hard to coax flavor out of potatoes sometimes. So have your kind of favorite seasoning salt. This is a favorite. Um, this is actually lemon pepper. I used this on the, the broccoli that I sauteed today because that's going to give it a nice tang when I make that hot dish. Uh, you should always have some good, good granulated garlic powder. White pepper. White pepper is the key to many, many things. The key to white pepper also is uh, restraint. You have to start with a smidge and work up from there. 
if you've ever gotten too much white pepper into a thing, it's just awful. So you do have to be somewhat careful with the white pepper. You can always add more. You can't take it away once it's in there. But white pepper is one of my secret happy, happy ingredients. And this is organic white pepper. Okay, so um, that's one thing. Good salts, good pepper, good granulated garlic. Right now I have chopped onions. I don't have any onion powder. A good onion powder is great to have on hand because it is a flavor booster. And I will be using this later on today in the, in the casserole also. Another flavor booster, and I am gonna show the brand on this because it's wonderful, it's called Better Than Bullion. And it's not like those little hard cubes that you see in the store. This is like actually made from chicken stock. Uh, so they make an organic version. You can get it at the Wintergreen Food Co-op in Albert Lee. This is a great flavor baster for soups. Booster, <laughs> not baster. Soups, gravies, sauces, Anything you wanna pump that chicken flavor up better than bullion. They also have beef, they also have vegetable, and they have ham. So if you're a, a fan of ham and bean soup or scalp potatoes and ham, this uh, better than bullion ham base is wonderful to boost that. The brand of sour cream that I use, also cottage cheese, is Daisy. And again, I'm going to show the brand on this. I've been using Daisy sour cream since the early 2000s, since I first read about it. And I used to have to get it from my distributors before they started carrying it uh, regularly on grocery shelves. Here's the thing I loved about Daisy sour cream. The ingredients. And ingredients are important. The ingredients here is just what you wanna see. Cultured cream. Cultured cream. That's it contains milk. Okay, because it's cultured cream. There's no salt. There's no locust bean gum. There's no carrageenan gum. There's no modified food starch. There's no whatever they like to stick in sour cream to make it have a consi whatever consistency. Daisy sour cream, Daisy cottage cheese. It's cultured cream. It's perfect. Okay, so one of my favorite, favorite, favorite products. All right, so that's about everything here that you need to know about my favorite basic things. And then later on, I will answer some more questions about layering flavor and using herbs and seasonings to bring up your flavors and how that all kinds kind of works together. So there you are. And this was for you, Kelly. You know who you are. Love you. Rustic Tart.